Hello, good morning and good evening to everybody. Thank you for joining us in this inaugural academy. What a tremendous uh, initiative. Um, and I'm thrilled to be part of it here at the very beginning as we get started. But I think this is a fantastic medium for us to continue our pursuits, to develop ourselves as artists, and to stay the course. And we've moved into this digital realm for the dissemination of information. All of us who are going to become uh, adept in this technology and all of us who are going to take full advantage of, of digital resources and recording arts, uh, we have a vehicle, a medium to, to learn, to, to study, to uh, share, our, share our work. Uh, and so I, I, I thank uh, John and, and Lily, for, Lily for this. I, I thought it's a chance to just kind of take you through some topics and, and some strategies and practice tips that, 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 that uh, as was mentioned, relate back to the elements of, of physiology in our playing and what we do in the practice room. For many of us, practicing is a very love-hate relationship we 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 know we must practice we know it's necessary some people find a lot of nourishment from practicing uh, some of us see practicing as as a, a, a form of clocking in and and putting your time in with the hopes that there there will be results at the end of a process, whether that process is truncated, you have to, something to learn in maybe a week's time or something that you're planning for months out. But just like any kind of athlete or, or, or uh, you know, task related functions that develop, that, that must develop a, a level of conditioning, there must be consistent amount of time put to something. And, and that is really where we might start to see the differences between a, a, an elite practicer, someone who really understands physiology, neurology, neuroscience, someone who just sees practicing as a chore where they, they, they're trying to in some ways stick to a script maybe that has been put out by their teacher for them. Uh, many, many students or many players even once we're out of school and we no longer have a mentor guiding us we truly have to find ourselves and we have to truly create a, this, this sense of this sense of duty to practicing but we have to we have to shape practicing that fits our goals and oftentimes we have to do that on our own everything comes back to this point of deep practicing deep physiological connection with whatever task it may be. When we talk about developing your sound, the mouthpiece is key to practicing your sound. And by developing some awareness of all of these, we've come, I've come to feel that it's important to embrace all of it. So the departure point for me is a concert, station zero. That's neutral. That's common frame of reference. It's a referential point for me to understand my best sound, how that translates into my instrument, where that get, where where I where where that becomes the where that becomes the 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 I guess the the tonal center, if you will. going to be my referential point for where I place my mouthpiece on the neck. That's this spot is going to be based on my memory of station zero, what I might call home base. So So uh, it, it's a further delineation of mouthpiece work to look at a, a, a set of pitches that frame the entire 
for me, frame the entire experience of how I play the saxophone. Once we start to kind of move into the extremities, we start migrating into different places. We actually might find those lower vowels help us on the sharpest low bell tones. But we also have to keep that pressure up. If you drop your jaw off of the low B flat, you actually lose the integrity of the note.